Uh, Lord Goldsmith told the Iraq inquiry this week that he was uncomfortable with Tony Blair's statements that the war was, was legal under international law. Are the panel comfortable with this? Tony Blair, of course, is appearing tomorrow before the Iraq inquiry for a second time. Uh, George Galloway, are you comfortable? Uh, well, I think that the recall is because even the establishment stooges on the inquiry could not ignore what, in establishment speak, they call inconsistencies in the former Prime Minister's initial evidence, which in real people speak is now in tatters. On just the issue that you mention, it's clear that they kept the Attorney General, the country's most senior legal official, absolutely out of the loop, to use his words, and as far away from the Prime Minister as it was possible <coughs> to keep him, just so <coughs> that the attorney would not be able to tell the then Prime Minister that what he was proposing to do was illegal. And another way of putting that is that what he was proposing to do was a crime. And usually, when people commit a crime, though not always, they end up in front of the courts and in front of a justice system. And I look forward to the day when Mr. Blair is not in front of establishment stooges, but in The Hague, facing war crimes charges at the International Court. And, and, by, the way, and by the way, his, his Goebbels, his Lord Haw Haw, Alistair Campbell, who's got the same blood on his hands, ought to be sitting in the dock alongside him. All right, just... You went, uh, just before we, before we go to Alistair Campbell, you went rather farther, uh, further than that, going before a court. You said, would the assassination of Tony Blair by a suicide bomber be morally justified? Yes, it would be. It would be entirely logical and explicable and morally yeah. equivalent yeah. to ordering the deaths yeah. of thousands of innocent people in Iraq, as Blair did. Do you still believe Tony Blair's assassination would be that, morally that, justified? That's not, of course, the whole quote. The whole quote is, if I were an Iraqi, whose country had been invaded, whose family had been destroyed, whose house, house had been destroyed, whose entire life had been destroyed by Tony Blair and George W. Bush, would I regard an assassination of Tony Blair as being morally justified? Of course I would. However, I'm not calling for it. I hope it doesn't happen. If I hear anyone's going to do it, I'll report it to Scotland Yard. I know that's a very much longer quote, but it rather puts it in a proper perspective. Alistair Campbell. Well, not only did George say that he thought that he, Tony Blair it would be justifiable for an Iraqi to uh, assassinate him, George Galloway is also probably the only person in this room who met Saddam Hussein. And he stood before him and he said, Sir, I salute your courage, your strength and your indefatigability. And that was shameful as well. Yeah. Now, yeah. <clears throat> Tony, not, Tony Blair... Wait, wait, wait. Not quite as wait, bad wait, as wait, killing wait. people, is it? Tony Blair... Tell will, us about Dr David Kelly. Tony Blair will go back to the Chilcot inquiry tomorrow. He's already given evidence for many, many hours, as I did. I think it's perfectly right that if the Chilcot inquiry thinks there are questions for him to answer, he should go back and he will go back and he'll give a very full account of himself. The question referred to the, the, the Attorney General. And I saw the headlines in, in the papers this week and I must admit, I looked at them and I thought, wow, what's that about? So I did what I often do when I see headlines in newspapers. I went to read the whole document. And if anybody wants it afterwards, they can take the whole document from me and they can read it. And what it actually shows, and I don't know if George has read it, what it actually shows is the reasoning that led the Attorney General to conclude that when military action was taken, it was lawful, under Resolution 1441. And it's true that at points in it, he says that he felt he wasn't properly consulted at various points, and that's a legitimate complaint that obviously he can, he can make. He also says that there were points at which the Prime Minister said things with which he felt uncomfortable. And again, the Prime Minister, Tony Blair, sorry to call him the Prime Minister, Tony Blair can go to the inquiry and answer that tomorrow. But the point is, if you read this whole 16-page document, it goes through why ultimately the Attorney General said to the, the government, said to the cabinet, you have legal authority to remove Saddam. And I think that for George Galloway to talk about 
to, to take this out of context, he talks about his own quotes being taken out of context, he's taken this out of context as well. And I have to say, I think that Tony Blair's leadership through that period, there's all this talk now about the, the letters to George Bush and, and all that sort of thing. People constantly want to look for a conspiracy theory. All I can tell you, having been alongside Tony Blair, watched the care with which he took that decision, he did it because he believed Saddam had to be confronted, Saddam had to face up to his obligations, and instead of having people like George Galloway going and saluting his indefatigability, he had finally to be forced to be removed from power. Okay.